extradition to the U.S. Not everybody wants it, and not everybody needs it. In my case, I wanted it because I knew I was gonna die. In the Mexican prisons if I stayed over there. El Cholo Ivan is better known as the chief of El Chapo's Assassin does not want it and He was trying really hard to not get extradited, but It is not looking good. Let's get into this video drugs money mansions and private jets a myth is being created around the narco culture. Narco culture has gone mainstream and can be seen in various areas like music, religion, soap operas, fashion, and language. But it's not all the pretty roses people like to see. Join me as I tell you the truth behind cartel life. This is narco culture. Hey, what's up, guys? My name is JC. I am Wrong Strong. If you are new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell so you don't miss nothing. If you're part of my crew, mi familia, mi raza, you already know. Subanza la suburban. Let's get this video on the road. What's up, man? We're talking about today about el. Cholo Ivan, yes. There's famous, famous pictures of him out there. He was El Chapo's pretty much head of security and right-hand man. When I say that is not in business, but his associate that kept him safe. He was obviously arrested with El Chapo, the famous picture. And well, now that the main guys are in jail and they finished telling on each other and getting everybody locked up, all the dust is finally settling down that now the U.S. is coming in and cleaning house, just like the dude. The feds, I've said it day in, day out, do not play. <laughs> they want money, drugs, and life. That's all they want. The U.S. wants to extradite him. And Cholo Ivan was the head security and oversaw all the kills of the Sinaloa cartel. I would not want that job. And I mean, this ain't his first time uh, running into to the cops or, or, you know, trouble. He actually, he was arrested in Sinaloa in 2005 and actually was uh, in the Cerezo over there. But um, he planned a, bad, a badass escape when a party was happening in the in the jail, so you know, I don't know if it's actually elite, it's, if it's legal over there in Mexico to try and escape because a lot, a lot of dudes are uh, dig holes, fucking um, and, and get away. One of my friends actually was at uh, the Cerezo with me in San Luis Potosí. He actually built a bed because he used to work in the uh, carpentry uh, unit. He built a bed where on a visitation he sent it out and he was in like in a secret compartment inside of it and he escaped i think he was from i think he was a chinola yeah so he's had his run in with the cops in 2012 they actually tried to arrest him but his girlfriend maria flores a former beauty queen jumped out and started shooting and they actually killed her but he got away that's crazy right you know Actually, a lot of these beauty queens end up dating big time uh, drug, drug lords, you know, and uh, it has to be the money, it has to be the bad boy, you know, it, it has to be all those things into one, I guess money and power attracts. The only charges that he's actually facing in Mexico is uh, unlawful possession of a firearm, 
homicide and assault on soldiers. And I say only because homicide is not that bad in Mexico. You don't even, you don't even get that much time. I've seen a lot of the uh, local gang members in San Luis Potosí get two, four, you know, five years for a homicide because uh, it was done in in a fight, a riña, shit like that. So you know, uh, if he was to stay in Mexico, he he would be able to to get out and manage to you know not stay that long in there. But it's not looking good. His Mexi Mexican attorneys have you know put it in paperwork after paperwork but it is not looking good it is looking like mexico will be handing him over that was said in a court document last week and it is not looking good man um you gotta understand that the prison system is very very different in mexico than it is in the united states and with that being said is that i don't care how much money you have in the feds here in the united states you still get a set budget of what you could buy a month and even if you get other inmates to buy commissary for you or, or give or for them to give you their their phone minutes so you could use them because you could do all that and i've seen people with with big money you know do that um you know i had a, a friend he was from the cali from the cali days uh colombia and they called him el mocho and he had big, big money and, you know, one thing he, he always told me was, you know, how many soups can you really buy? You know, how many soups can you really buy? How many of the same jogging pants can you have? It, 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 in the United States, it doesn't matter how much money you have. You're, you're the same. You have the same number, the same uniform, the same everything. And in Mexico, there's there's a lot of ways around a lot of stuff where if you have big big money you dress different you eat different uh obviously you get conjugal visits so you get to party a lot more <laughs> i have some wild stories i'm actually going to drop some videos sometimes this week where i think the longest i ever partied in there was two weeks non-stop <laughs> and it makes time go so fast that you don't even realize that you're doing time man I'm not gonna lie when the American Council came to get me that day I had not realized how much time had already passed because I was always high I was always drunk I was always up to something and all I remember was bits and pieces of like when Biggie got killed, mataron al Biggie rapper, and I, that's all I remember, like in the news and, and stuff like that. And and it, it was all mostly a, a blur because the time went so fast because you you were constantly partying. I mean, it's it's the one time that I did the most drugs in my whole life while I was in there, and when you get to the united states like it's 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 a whole different ball game you're not you're not you're not gonna do that you in mexico you're you're allowed to still be that drug lord that you were you were on the streets inside there you know and u.s has gotten really big on these extraditions because they're big big money they they actually extradited a shitload of drug lords in the past 10 years it's went up like crazy and they've made it a point to extradite them and not do the american exchange program they used to have back in the day where they used to bring back the americans where i was actually you know part of that uh, they have a new series on netflix about his life el cholo ivan um i actually watched it it shows his his dad um everything is actually pretty good um it just shows how a lot of these kids from Sinaloa kind of like bred it to, to be, you know, uh, drug lords. Uh, I'm not saying all of them, so you know, don't take it the wrong way, but a lot of their mentality, it, they've been doing it for years, 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 like from the early, early 1900s. And some of them were bred it to, to do that. Just like a lot of the, you know, Colombian kids out there were, were bred it to do the same. And uh, the, the series is actually pretty good. They, uh, they started off with the big escape that caught both of them. Um, when um, 
He was arrested next to El Chapo. Uh, they don't say it's El Chapo in the in the series, I guess, because of they would have to pay him. But they show the whole beginning like that and how everything starts. But the movie's based on El Cholo Ivan and how he grew up, his dad, who his dad was, everything, how he pretty much became part of the life and was kind of like forced into it almost to you know be a man. Uh, the whole Mexican machista thing, you know, but. One thing that I've told everybody in my videos is that a lot of this stuff has been in movies, songs, just like rap music. It's just in Spanish. ¿Quién es tu jefe? Yo no sé cantar. Uh, they've talked about smuggling drugs over, you know, in Mexico since, you know, way back in the day. I mean, I used to watch some of my favorite movies, La Banda del Carro Rojo, La Suburban Dorada, all these songs and, and, and movies that I loved growing up as a kid all talked about drug dealing, making money, uh, crossing the border, bringing the drugs to U.S., becoming a big businessman, all that shit. So, you know, it's, it, comes, it falls all down to the whole, you know, of glorifying that life and kids following in the footsteps. I mean, what, what are we going to do? That's, that's what it is. Mafia movies, cartel movies now, gang movies, all that shit. So... I don't think it's ever gonna stop because it's the number one money maker. People like to watch that shit. People like to hear about it. I mean, look at me, I'm talking about it. <laughs> but I'm telling you this right here, right now. It never ends well. You could be dating the beauty queen of Venezuela. You, be, you could be driving a Ferrari. Look at the twins. They were driving fucking Ferraris, they were they lived in million dollar mansions and at the end of the day it all came crumbling down because it has no Cinderella story. And the ones that did make it out, it's probably the one percent that made it up, opened up some businesses. And I, I get messages all the time, oh my, my friend made it out. Well he was a lucky one because not too many people make it out. And and don't say that he made it out because you never know. I met one of the biggest crip leaders in the feds when I first went in, he had been out the business for 15 years and they came and got him over some beeper shops and cellular phone shops. You, you don't know that you actually made it out until you've made it out. So with that being said, don't judge nobody, stay in your lane, live savage. And remember, you only have one life to live, live it out here free where you don't have to watch your shoulder. You don't have to worry about what street you're on. And you don't have to gang bang, use drugs or nothing. Just grow with your family, get better every day, read a book, educate yourself, say no to drugs, and be careful with the COVID because that motherfucker is a bitch. I'll catch you guys in the rebound.